Hey, my name is Tom Jacobs. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, also an energy worker, channel, medium. And uh, I'm at tdjacobs.com and also healingsuicide.com. And uh, one of the things that I do every month is a monthly forecasting service that I call my subscription service. And starting last month with the Sun and Libra, I put up a Sun and Libra video. It used to be all the stuff was behind a paywall would be how to think of it. And I decided to make the Sun uh, forecast every month available to all. And then if you want the forecast on the outer planets and the inner planets and kind of weaving the whole story together, as well as channel meditations for each new and full moon that are about a half an hour, sometimes 40 minutes, and perks on just about everything that I offer, products and services through my site, then you can become a monthly subscriber uh, through tdjacobs.com through the subscription service page. So I put this out there. I wanted to get more of my, my forecasting teachings out there and available to you so you can understand uh, more about what I do and how I do it and uh, the depth that I go to and what I'm doing that's, that, that's unique that might be of, of uh, help to you, how I think about astrology or how I think astrologically. So this video is about the sun and Scorpio. And um, what I always do here is um, talk about the transition first from Libra to Scorpio. So, uh, and I do that year round every year. And it's and, uh, sometimes they say the same things over and over again. Sometimes I come up with new things. And But this idea of looking at the sun in a sign as a giant flashlight, putting your attention on certain themes. So when it's in Libra, which is where we've been for a month as of this recording, uh, the sun, by the way, it enters um, uh, 10, 19 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesday, October 23rd. Today's the 22nd, uh, doing this a day ahead. So almost a month now, the sun has been in the sign of Libra. So what's obvious is we want to get along. We want to be received. We want to be accepted by others. We want to be liked. We also want to be generous and we want to be kind and we want to receive kindness. So it would be a mistake to think that Libra is about kindness and generosity and balance, fairness, harmony. Libra is about trying to figure out how to create those things and how to give and take and how to share an experience together, how to build bridges together, how to learn how to be in relationship with each other. And you might have been told or seem to have thought that Libra is straight up about relationships, but it's about the processes of relating. So when a planet transits through the sun of Libra, you might see what isn't fair or what is imbalanced or unjust because you're challenged to figure out how to create some fairness, balance, and justice. You might see things that aren't kind. You might have thoughts that aren't generous and kind and loving because the sun in Libra says, hey, let's, let's be fair to each other, right? Let's try to figure out how to be nice. Now, one of the harder things about Libra is when we become nice at the expense of honesty, right? This idea that like, I can't really be honest because if I tell you what I really think, you won't like me. So that's a kind of a downside of life in Libra. If you have a lot of Libra natal placements, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, but also when the giant flashlight in the sky does this for a month every year, you know, what's fair, what isn't fair? How can I be liked? You know, where, do, where am I accepted by others? What is, and sometimes it can turn into what does it cost to be accepted? Like if I don't tell you what I really think to make sure that you like me taken to an extreme that can have a person becoming a kind of chameleon. Well, I know that uh, this person in my, I know my mom is like this, so I got to kind of dance around this. And well, my partner's like this, so I got to kind of avoid that kind of topic. And well, I don't want to push anybody's buttons, right? I don't want to make things hard. I, I want to make sure that things are smooth. So one of the downsides of Libra is if we adapt and defer, but we're not honest. So you may have seen some of that stuff in your world over the last uh, solar month. Libra is essentially about getting to know each other, finding out what works in relationship. You can think of it also as like, what can I, what can I get away with? Or what can you get away with? Like we're, we sometimes test each other when we're living through Libra times. Um, and so we receive reflection during Libra times from others about what we're doing well and what we're not doing well. Uh, sometimes it's just how they treat us. We develop an idea of who we are. Sometimes it's what they actually say to us or refuse to say to us or in ways they might refuse to treat us or be with us. 
that may have us defining who we are through the lens of how others see us. That's kind of one of the cores of Libra and experience. So if things aren't fair, if people can't read your mind and you're upset, if um, you found yourself being, you know, snappy or snippy to somebody and, and you don't, you don't like that. If somebody was treating you in a way that you didn't like, well, the remedies are about communication. And what I'd say in Libra, an emphasis is being willing to be seen, not at your depth, but showing who you are. I often think of it as um, um, showing up willing to be an equal or showing up as an equal, showing up as a part of the relationship. In that way, you know, let's say that you have a, a, a bunch of friends and everyone always wants to go to the same kind of movie. Maybe you don't, but maybe you don't speak up about it because it seems unimportant. But maybe if you speak up about it, then you are adequately represented in your relationships. And you say, I don't, I don't want to go see this kind of thing again. And they say, oh, really? We thought you loved it. And you say, I just didn't say anything because I wanted things to be smooth. And you guys seem to love it. Well, somebody else might say, yeah, me too. I don't like it. Let's go, let's go do whatever, right? Something else. Same thing with where a family vacations or how people, uh, what people do together in every part of life or what a couple does or what families do. You know, it's, it's everything. Do you show up as part of your relationships? But it's learning to get along in a functional day-to-day -day way that where communication is super important. I often tell people who are having Libra problems, and I have Libra issues in my own life sometimes. I have a lot of things in Libra, and then some things in the seventh house too. And the remedy is always to become more honest and more forthright and then to recognize that some parts of you may not want to because I want to be liked. I don't want you to be upset. I don't want to put anyone out, but to be assertive within relationship is part of Libra. Think about Aries Libra as an, as an axis. Well, Aries, you know, a point in Aries is to be assertive. Well, does that mean if Libra is the opposite, does that mean not to be assertive? I would say no. I'm sorry if you can hear this. There's somebody screaming outside. I'm just going to let it go. I guess you get to listen when I get to listen to. Um, you know, is the opposite of being assertive in Aries in Libra is the opposite, you know, not being assertive. I would say no. I'd say it's learning to be assertive within the dynamics of partnership and relationship together. So just because you don't have a lot of Aries planets, but you do have Libra planets or something, doesn't mean you should always be quiet. It means that you are challenged to work with others, but tell them who you are. Tell them what you like and don't like. Work together, in other words. So another Libra thing is negotiation and compromise. But some people may do Libra stuff in terms of uh, you know, compromising self-respect because they defer too much or they just want I, want, I just want you to be happy. One person says to the other one, well, what do you want to do this weekend? And the second person goes, I don't know, what do you want to do? And the person goes, no, I want to know what you want to do, right? Or what do you want for your birthday or something, right? How do you want to celebrate this great news? And the other person goes, I don't know, what do you want to do? Like, that's where Libra goes wrong. It looks nice. But if you hang around people who have self-respect, they'll get, they'll get frustrated with you because they want you to have self-respect too. It's okay to, so what do I want to say about the Libra thing? It's okay to own what you want. But recognize not everybody's available for that. People don't always want to give you what you want. It's okay to have needs, but you might find out people are unavailable sometimes. Okay, that's life. So when the sun's in Libra, all these things have attention on them. And of course, we do have the, the two lunations, right? A Libra new moon and then an Aries full moon later in the month. And, um, and again, as part of the subscription service, I... Uh, those channel meditations are included to help you work through some of those things and energetic, you know, move energy and really get grounded and move through things. Um, but so that's kind of an overview of Libra, right? Then we get into the transition into Scorpio and in Scorpio, the need to tell the truth becomes extremely important. In Libra, telling the truth is like showing up as an equal or, sh or adequately representing yourself, right? Making sure people can see who you are. In Scorpio, 
we trigger ourselves and each other, we find out that things under the surface need expression. Sometimes they're intense. Sometimes they cause us to be vulnerable. We feel vulnerability in sharing these parts of ourselves. In Libra, it's not really like that. In Libra, it's, um, hey, everybody, let's go for Thai food. And one person never says, but always feels, I don't want to go for Thai food. Why do we have to do this? Why? Right? So then in Libra, it's like, I need to, I need to, to show up. In Scorpio, it's about depth. It's about your vulnerability. It's about where you trust people and what that opens up within you. So um, Libra is like, we're getting to know each other. Scorpio is like, something is being activated that needs expression. It is from the depth. I must tell the truth, but the process of Scorpio, therefore, is in learning the truth. So when it comes to you and how you're activated during a Scorpionic time, you know, you might not know why you feel what you feel, but you're feeling something. That's normal for opponents in Scorpio or people with strong Scorpio emphases. So you have to figure it out. That's the, the veil parting and the digging and the spelunking of Scorpio. Like, I don't like this thing or behavior that you have. Why? I don't know. Figuring out what it triggers in you is an important part of the process of Scorpio. So it does require communication, but very often, well, two things I want to say about communication and uh, contrasting Libra to Scorpio. With Libra, it's like, I have to show up as an equal. I have to be willing to listen to you too. I didn't mention that part, but that's important. Being willing to listen. Give and take, share. The dialogue evolves between us. Compromise negotiation with self-respect and respect of other, right? But the communication part in Scorpio is I become aware of what I'm feeling and experiencing, needing and wanting or hating. I have to become aware of it. I have to figure out how to put words to it. Now I may do that before I talk to you or I may do that with you. So in Scorpio, sometimes people are reactive when they really need to hold space for the fact that someone's depth is being activated. Something under the surface, someone's deeper part, right, is being activated, okay? Now, the other thing with Libra is it's all on the surface. The Scorpio stuff is all about the depth. So in this engagement with you, I had this intense reaction and I didn't know why, but now I do. Here's my thing. So we're activating each other. We also have to make sure we're not projecting. So what bothers you, and there are two different levels of this. One is what bothers you about other people. Own that it's true about you too, right? It's true about you or you have a judgment about it, something, but own it. But the other thing is this, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, I think I need to shut the window. Yeah, it was a, it was a big yellow box with, on wheels with a bunch of windows in it. And it rolled up in the neighborhood and spilled children on the street and everybody made noises and dogs were happy to see them and barked. That's what happened. I don't know. It's a yellow box with wheels that contains children leaving some of them in my neighborhood for an unknown reason. Okay. Um, yeah, so I might trigger you. You might trigger me. Let's realize that something is happening, but we don't have to take it personally. You might have fear that makes me feel defensive, and then I'm angry because I'm defensive. I don't feel safe, right? And then I might make you, you know, that's Scorpio. Stuff from under the surface comes up and in some way needs expression and it will activate other people. So it's really important to hold space for your own emotions during a time of Scorpio and also recognize that you don't have to absorb things from others, even if you help them process it. You're not responsible for what others experience. You're not responsible for what others do or how they experience what you do. Um, I just, I remember this thing that happened in, in my own world some years ago that made me very angry when someone kind of violated a boundary. And then I said, what are you doing? And the person said, I'm sorry you had that experience. And I wanted to say, expletive, <laughs> apologize for what you did. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, you know, like, like, I'm sorry you had that experience. Well, that indicates 
that I mean, I'm still kind of mad at the boundary thing, but but anyway, um, but but it indicates that this idea that like I'm not responsible for how you experience things that's something we need to learn when we deal with scorpionic energy and scorpionic issues or live during scorpionic times. Now, in Libra, we're going back and forth. I like blue. I like green. Right. I like soup, and I I like uh, sandwiches. Whatever. Like back and forth. We're learning. Well, who's your, fa- your who's your favorite actor and what kind of music do you like whatever where did you grow up and oh what's in uh then in scorpio it's um i kind of want to know something under the surface like i'm curious about you know i have a secret or i'm curious about yours or you know and including getting into intimacy where we want to connect in deep ways with each other in libra we're getting to know each other in scorpio we're trying to connect so that can be wanting to understand something deeply or wanting to like chew on someone you find attractive or consume or attack or, you know, something jump on someone uh, that's possible with scorpionic energy. You might get triggered in a deep way in some way, right? Scorpio is a water sign. So you feel things, right? Libra is an air sign. So you might think and talk. Scorpio is a water sign and it is co-ruled by Mars. So there's fire in there too. It's fiery water or watery fire uh, in the way I think of it. Technically it's a water sign and um, you know, traditionally. So there's depth that comes out in Scorpio and some people might not expect it. And so, so one thing I like to talk about with this is intense attraction or repulsion a craving or uh, this is toxic, get this away from me. I can't, you know, I love this or I hate this. Not like in Libra, it's like, oh, that is interesting or I like that. In Scorpio, it's like, uh, you know, like it's I want this or I hate it, right? I love it or I hate it. Strong reactions. So that is part of the solar month of Scorpio as well. So what I want to leave you with about this transition idea and how to think about living during a Scorpionic time, including the sun and Scorpio every year, is that as you mind your business, (laughs) as you live your life, and others do too, many people may be inadvertently activated, stuff under the surface, even their shadow parts, I haven't talked about that yet, shadow parts, parts they don't wanna deal with within themselves, come up for air. That's where part of this intense reaction to things is. Like we may judge our intensity or the depth to which we feel things, like nobody else seems affected by this thing, but I am lit up. That's a scorpionic intense reaction. You know, I love it or I don't love it. Um, so shadow work with, during a time of Scorpio, I'll talk about that for a moment. Um, you might feel, you know, something really strong that you have to figure out how to deal with. You're invited to allow that you have all human motivations and feelings. You have all possible human expressions. Those that we would consider light those that we would consider dark. You're human. Dealing in a Scorpio with Scorpio energy requires finding that out. So are you ashamed about something in yourself? About past choices? About what you don't like or what you do like? What you want or what you hate? Do you judge those things? Time of Scorpio, the the giant flashlight in the sky, sun during Scorpio may put your attention on those things with the opportunity to confront what looks negative and dark and change your relationship with it. Like, think about this. Think about mature Scorpio energy may have intense reactions, emotional reactions to things, even defensive reactions against things or toward things that seem unhealthy or toxic or dangerous or damaging, but doesn't have to throw up defenses or attack. Like, you can feel this is bad for me, but I don't have to attack it or defend myself. If you can hold space for intense emotions and not judge that you have this reaction, you don't have to freak out. During the sun in Scorpio, you might find people realizing they're freaking out and they don't understand why. For a lot of people, it's because something they happened to sense or pick up in others made them feel unsafe. So one of your jobs is, you know, can I own my feelings and emotions? Can I make peace with the fact that I have all possible human motivations and feelings? And dealing with the shadow stuff, can I bring light to shadow? Can I accept who I am? What you might be ashamed about or embarrassed about or something in the past or present. Sun in Scorpio says, get to the truth. I think that will be a good headline for this transition. You know, get to the truth of things. Dig for the truth. 
Okay, now moving into the forecast part of this, talking about the sun's uh, ingress and the aspects. The sun again will enter Scorpio, 10, 19 a.m. Pacific time, Wednesday, October 23rd. Now, pretty immediately, it begins an opposition to retrograde Uranus and Taurus, which will be exact uh, Monday, October 28th at four degrees, 36 minutes. So it enters Scorpio and you've got to figure out the truth. You might get intense curiosity to figure something out, or you might have that intense reaction to another person or a situation. Then sun giant flashlight in the sky will show you retrograde Uranus and Taurus reality. You might want something, but somebody's unavailable because he or she is focusing on his or her own priorities. Uh, in the stuff that comes with the subscription service, I explain all this outer planet uh, stuff that I'm referencing, but Uranus and Taurus basically is the need to free yourself, and we're all experiencing this, through focusing on our value system and trimming down our expenses and where we use our time, energy, and money. Time and energy as resources, including money as a resource. Where do I pay attention? Do I waste my time? What do I invest my money in? Well, these things are kind of Taurian things. Sun in Scorpio is the need to get to the truth to the bottom of something, but in opposition to Uranus and Taurus, you might realize I kind of am curious about this, but I don't have time to deal with it. Or like I said, somebody else might be unavailable. Um, you know, the desire to dig with the sun in, Taurus, the sun in Scorpio, you know, you might realize I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this drama would be one way it can come up within yourself or between you and another person. Okay, so again, that's exact Monday, October 28th. You know, with these sun aspects, it's they don't build up steam over time, so they're not the most important things ever, but I do like to kind of give you a tour of the sun's trek. Well, then we get into the Scorpio new moon. I'm going to read these details, and then I'll pull up the chart and, and, uh, and show you. Uh, Sunday, October 27th, which is actually before that Uranus opposition is exact, or opposition to Uranus, at 8.38 p.m. Pacific time at 4 Scorpio um, at 25. So, um, so let me share the screen here. So Scorpio new moon. Okay. Okay. So, so it is, uh, and just ignore the houses. I just did this for where, for where I live, uh, in Oregon, but anyway, so it's down here at four twenty five um, a, a Scorpio. So a new moon is always a chance for a new beginning or to step out in a new direction. I always like to think of it as, Allowing something to, to be birthed from the inside, allowing something to emerge, right? To come out. You might not know what it is. So one of the good things to do with a new moon is to set some intentions given these themes and how you know they play out in your life or where you might feel you're blocked or not owning something or whatever, or resisting some change. So setting intentions and then watching what happens, watching what you're guided to do, what feels from the inside, it's a new moon. There's a quiet space, right, where there's no light. Well, that doesn't mean just that you can't see stuff. It means that you can sense into the depth of things. So Scorpio, the truth, boundaries between people, um, telling the truth, right, being honest, like doing that process of holding space for emotion without judging your emotions. New boundaries and not carrying other people's malfunctions or pains or grief, right? Dealing with your own pain and grief. Being, being um, less reactive by accepting the deeper truth, less resisting, thinking less that you have to fight for something or fight yourself or fight your shadows or an inner monster you're afraid of letting out. Again, that idea of intense attraction, intense repulsion, stop fighting it. Let it be what it is. Hold space for it. Don't fight yourself. Anyway, something new in Scorpio. Now, again, you might not know what it is. You might not know where exactly you're headed or how it can happen, but if you have clear intentions, you can set something up and then let it unfold the way it needs to. There's a thing in the, with all new moons about kind of stepping out from the darkness or the place that doesn't have light shined on it right now. It's not darkness as in something negative, um, but letting something be. And, and I would argue that for many people, it's going to be about an intense attraction or an intense rejection or repulsion, like intense desire that could feel obsessive 
or an intense reaction against something, being defensive or shut down towards something. Any, anything in Scorpio needs to open in order to be vulnerable, well, in order to be clear and connected, right? This, the, the need is to connect in an honest way, but we resist being open because we're sometimes afraid of what we feel, again, the intensity of it. So this new moon may, for a lot of people, be about that. Now, this is opposing that you're on some Taurus, so this is a huge deal. And it is about the need to connect and also the reality that people have priorities. You might um, feel like you need to express something to someone uh, emotionally, verbally, physically. You might be, this might be about sexuality, right? Uh, this might be you feeling activated to non-verbally express something to somebody else would be a broad, generalized way to say it. Um, and it might be that people really, somebody needs to really focus on what they're doing. See, the thing with Uranus and Taurus, as a longer term thing and for several months retro, retrograde, it, it went into Taurus during 2018 for a few months, stationed, I don't know if it was like two degrees or something, two or three degrees. And then it retroed back into late Aries and now it's back in Taurus again. Uranus shows people what, uh, what they're bored with or what no longer serves them, what they want freedom from regarding time, energy, and other resources, including money and possessions, Uranus and Taurus is having people, some people are experiencing a shakeup in what they're willing to use their time and energy for, and also attention as well as money. I, we always think about money with this stuff, but I want you to realize your, what you pay attention to is a resource as well, has value, right? What you pay attention to. We use those words, I wasted my time on this. I'm paying attention to you now. I'm not paying attention, right? I can't afford to pay attention to that or I lost a bunch of money, or I lost time, I wasted time. We, you know, regarding our resources, we have that sense of value, and if we're using them appropriately. Uranus and Taurus right now is shaking up what you value and how you're willing to use your time and energy. So the Scorpio new moon is for planting a new seed for a deeper level of truth. For some people, it might be you perceive you need another person to witness your deep process, and other people aren't available right? Okay, there's that. Now I want to talk about the quincunx, which is the green, the dotted green line to Chiron, and also the asteroid, uh, sorry, not the asteroid, but the true black moon Lilith in Aries. So quincunxes are uncomfortable, and we don't know how to be in the same room with them. The need for connection is a scorpionic thing. A Scorpio new moon might be uh, in a craving, even maybe a little obsessive, for emotional or physical sexual connection, right? Or even just, I need to confide something in somebody. Think of it that on that level too. I really need someone to see this thing in me. Well, quincunxes means, a quincunx to a new moon like this means that you, that intention might at times get thrown off and you have to regroup. That's a nice way of saying it, but you can feel thrown off course. Your feeling of being able to connect with someone or tell the truth and really get through to somebody, or even be there for somebody else's deep emotional process, right? That's part of Scorpio too. Might be thrown off course because someone's triggered. Chiron and Aries can be very reactive because I sense the energy you feel and I don't wanna feel it. So A, <laughs> new moon in Scorpio is opposing Uranus and Taurus some people just don't have time for what you need to talk about. B, it's Quincunx, the Chiron, Chiron in Aries, which has the flavor of people not being available too. But they might not be available and they might blame you for triggering them. So I want to say to you, A, this new moon is pro maybe for many people about realizing new levels of going within in a self-sufficient, self-knowing way being honest with yourself about what you're feeling and needing and not needing, being honest with yourself about what you feel, what you need, et cetera, and realizing that if speed bumps come up with other people, don't take it personally. If you say, friend, I would really like to talk about how um, this thing about myself that it's really hard for me to talk about. Can I bring you this serious topic? And the friend says, why, yes, other friend, 
I'm happy to, to do that with you. I'm here for you. But what you say is triggers that person. Like, let's say you say, you know what? I lied to you last year about this thing. And that person can't hear you anymore because the person is hurt because you, you just said, I lied to you, right? That has the potential for an Aries planet, Quincunx, a Scorpio planet, to lead to conflict, escalating, blaming, or pushing or something, pushing away. Shutting down would be the worst thing with this uh, Scorpio new moon. So speed bumps about that. And also speed bumps in terms of if others aren't available or just say, you know what? I can't be your psychologist right now, partner or mother. I just, you know, that's the Uranus and Aries being unavailable. So look at those things as, and not take, don't take them personally, which is easy to say, but just recognize that's a huge theme of this full moon or this new moon. You might believe other people are necessary for you to validate what you're feeling is okay and not monstrous or that your intense attraction or repulsion to something is okay. You got to validate yourself. So Libra isn't always about togetherness. Scorpio isn't always about connecting. Libra, sometimes it is about connectedness. Scorpio, it is about connecting, but it's also about finding a deeper truth. And what, if you can't connect, gets pulled out of you. So look at your feelings and emotions. Look at your responses, your perceived needs. Realize that around this, um, this uh, new moon, you might, you might find out your intense reactions if others can't or won't meet your expectations or hold space for your emotional process. Uh, the, I didn't mention this, but the Chiron, the, the true black moon Lilith conjunct the Chiron at the time of this lunation. They're both quincunx the new, the new moon. The Lilith thing adds a, an erratic or unstable, uh, I'd say more reactive energy here because things with true black moon Lilith are always changing. Okay, so anyway. It's easier, I think, with the Lilith there to have an anger response, but because Chiron's there, we don't know what to do with it. Can I be angry that... Can, how do I deal with the pain as you're still talking when you just told me you lied to me last year? Like how, you know, dealing with feelings and emotions is a Chiron thing and the Lilith thing may be really reactive. All right, good. So um, moving on. Okay, so then we have um, uh, the sun will uh, try and retrograde uh, Neptune which is with the true black moon Lilith in Pisces on a Friday, November 8th at 16 degrees. So sun trine Neptune will happen twice a year as Neptune is in Pisces for, you know, 14 ish years. And we're in process with that. Uh, when the sun trines it, it'll be either in um, cancer or Scorpio. So trines create emotional flow or open the floodgates or open things up. I'd say with Neptune and Pisces may open the floodgates. So Sun in Scorpio says, look at what's true. Look at what you're feeling. Look at what you want to need. Look at how you might project on others or blame others if they can't meet your needs, right? Try Neptune and Pisces. You might have this opening to be able to see a higher truth about what part of you is malfunctioning or feeling hurt that somebody else isn't there for you. And this might be a great uh, time. Again, you know, for about two days, right? Um, at 16 degrees, so roughly from 15 to 17 degrees, you know, we use pretty tight orbs for the sun's transit. But an opportunity to relax and let go, right? Uh, the true black moon, as I just talked about uh, in the lunation chart, can be involved some stuff about reactivity and changeability. And I think that the true black moon with Neptune and Pisces, as it's dancing back and forth, actually, from Neptune to Chiron for some weeks, um, gives this opportunity of an instinctive check-in with what's true beyond what you would like to be true. So Sun in Scorpio is putting attention on how you may project on others if they don't meet your needs, as I said. Try the, the Neptune and the retro, or sorry, the true black moon, uh, Lilith and Pisces. There's an opening. You might pick up a bunch of information energetically and consciousness-wise that you kind of have to sort through and realize isn't yours, but it also might open you up to feeling part of what's happening around you. But again, withdraw projections, be really clear. Um, this can be a great day for creativity as well as emotional connections. Um, again, if you're not projecting on others, you might be disappointed with some sense of rejection or not being available if you do 
put your emotional validity on how someone responds to you. Neptune in Pisces says, you're a divine spirit having a human experience. The whole world is full of people trying to get their needs met. Don't take it personally. Neptune really asks us to never take things personally. Okay. Uh, then we move into uh, Mercury will be retrograde this month. Again, explaining the full story in the subscriber materials you can opt into. Um, Mercury will retrograde over the sun at 18 Scorpio 55. So just under 19 degrees on uh, Monday, November 11th. And of course that means it's halfway through its own retrograde period. Now, some people will, will teach, and there's validity in this, that when the Mercury gets super close to the sun, it's kind of drowned out. But I think um, energetically, I think, I think there's still, you know, because the sun is so huge when the Mercury passes over it, it's, it's so tiny. But I think there is validity to the understanding when the archetypes are together, th there is an opportunity. And so Mercury retrograding in Scorpio is about understanding the truth and, and digging, you know, digging, uh, 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 and understanding some of those mental, logical, linear mind expectations uh, about scorpionic uh, living. So when it's with the sun, you might have something click into focus. You might realize something. You might have clarity about something that wasn't available for the approximate week and a half of the retrograde before that. So, um, okay. And then during this time, uh, it, it will still be trying, it's still trying Neptune and Lilith and Pisces. So, some of that stuff I was talking about in that previous section may become more obvious or readily available to understand, or at least to, you know, maybe something becomes real in your life instead of just a global theme, my sensitivity to this. And I realize, Oh, I'm actually feeling it because this is from my own experience. This is what's happening, or this is what happened in my history. So anyway, you might have some connections and realizations during this time. Uh, then uh, let's look at the Taurus uh, full moon. So I'll share the other chart. All right, so Taurus full moon. So of course the sun's in Scorpio and this is happening at 1952 uh, uh, Scorpio. This is uh, uh, Tuesday, November 12th, 2019 at 5.35 a.m. Pacific time again. Uh, again, ignore the houses, but see that this sun in Scorpio has been shining for almost 20 days. The light on these scorpionic themes. How honest can I be? Why does this bother me about you? Can I own it to myself? Can I make peace with my shadows? Blah, 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 all that stuff. Uh, it is with Mercury. Uh, Mercury has already passed over it at this point, as I just talked about. Uh, so perception is important, right? The idea of things. And the sun in this context is what seems obvious. What's obviously happening. And it's with Mercury, right? It's also with the asteroid Lilith uh, here at 22 Scorpio. And that has to do not with the true black moon that I talk about, but it's an asteroid and has to do with um, sometimes social justice or working on behalf of underserved or marginalized people or populations. Sometimes it's anything that, 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 that is at the edges of the bell curve, kind of outside the, <clears throat> excuse me, the kind of safety of being in the middle of the bell curve where, it, you know, we conform. It's like nonconformist behavior. It's not necessarily rebellious uranium behavior. It's typically not charged. It's just alternative ways of doing things. So the light of the sun is wrapped up with the need to communicate, the need to understand and see into things, Mercury's retro, to understand the truth, to be more honest. And it's also wrapped up with seeing things from an alternative viewpoint, right? So how should I best deal with these shadows or emotions or power issues? I haven't used that word at all in this, this video, but the idea of power over power under comes into play with Scorpio quite often. What does power mean? When should I give myself a... a, a license or permission to be strong and competent. Well, then you have a Taurus full moon. The full moon all in every full moon, the moon itself offers this alternate perspective, the opposite and says, but wait a minute, it might be obvious to go through this drama, to go through this drama together, even in Scorpio. But I need this. And it's the opposite, Taurus. I need to slow down. You know, I just, I need to feel one thing at a time. I need to get in my body and not deal with five emotional tornadoes inside me in between us. I need to focus on this one thing and just kind of, it's not resting, but it's like consolidating and conserving energy. It's being intentional. Taurus energy is about being intentional. So if you or someone else, but also people in the world around you, 
will need during this full moon to slow down and focus on one thing or one thing at a time. Um, it's possible that there's just a lot of stuff swirling and people are reacting to each other. And uh, I, friend, I, I lied to you last year. And the other, and the friend is like, Oh, that hurts me. And the person's like, Oh, I didn't mean to hurt you. And then, well, you did hurt me. And I just don't know if I can trust you again. And I, how can I forgive you? And you know, ongoing dramatic dialogue and the emotions are up and people's throats are clogged and they're crying, you know, all this stuff, right? Taurus full moon comes up and it says, I just got to unplug from this drama and take care of myself. I need to do something constructive or proactive, or I need to do one thing at a time. So that's kind of the core of this Taurus new moon. Stop, wait, stop. One thing at a time. And also people might feel the emotions in their bodies as creating havoc. Well, the Taurus full moon says, I, I, I need right now to feel okay in my body. So I need to focus on that and not on this drama. Now, just for a moment, consider that if you are somebody who feels you need to get to the truth of something and you're stirred up and somebody says, whoa, hold up, hold up, too much drama. I'm going to go off be by myself and take an Epsom salt bath. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Just imagine how that can be frustrating when you're in the middle of needing to get to the verb or needing to resolve something or uh, how a professor used to say that, or, you know, needing to work through this thing and we're sparring and it's, you know, some person might opt out and it might be very frustrating for the other. Consider also this Taurus full moon says, I need to give myself permission to take care of myself. I might feel in the tractor beam <laughs> of your issues right now or our issues or how you affect me and I affect you. Ah, I just need to, you know, so there's a very positive energy here of investing in yourself, but you might actually not know if it's okay. So you, you know, or you might judge yourself because this person needs you. Like, let's say somebody calls you and says, like, you're like, um, this actually happened to me a week ago. A friend of mine called me and I was sitting here for like an hour thinking about something and I was really stressed out and I was super stressed out. And I was like, I kind of need a distraction, right? My friend calls me and says, I'm having this thing go on. Can you help me understand it? And I was like, yes, because it gave me something useful to do in the middle of my own drama. Right. And then later I said, when you called, this is the state I was in. She was like, Oh my God. You know? So anyway, so it's like focusing on one thing can help us come out of the drama, but also in that moment, let's say that this is what I want to get at with this full moon. If in that moment I said to her, Oh, I'm not available. I, I, I care about you. I love you. I, I can't do this. I have to be okay with saying no to her and she has to be okay with me saying no to her. So this Taurus full moon might have the level of, we have to do this. And one person and the other person says, I just can't do it right now. My nerves are shot. I've cried so much or I've yelled or I'm so frustrated. Right? So you might need to create some, some time. That's part of the Taurus thing. And the other part of this, it's super important is that Vesta is conjunct this full moon. And it's pretty tight. It's like a half degree away or less than that. Vesta is retrograde in Taurus. What are you devoted to regarding your time, energy, money, your resources? What values are you living according to? Vesta wants you to rethink what you're devoted to. So there's an element of being of service with, this, with Vesta always, being devoted to being of service. But when it's retrograde in Taurus, you have to figure out what you're doing. So it's next to this, this, this full moon. So the other way to think about this is one person might say, um, here's what I'm so upset about. And I was, what I'm, yeah, uh, uh, we're over here and never, you know, right? Like the show, you know, like it's the Tom show, it's the Fred show, whatever. It's the Jane show. Well, one person might emerge as a voice of calm in the middle of this and say, okay, I get it. Send some cords into the earth, take a deep breath, everything's going to be fine. Let's talk about it. So it can also be, let's work with this, but from a clear headed place. So just realize that influence may be the counter. Like some people will need to unplug, take an Epsom salt bath, unwind, get in their body, eat something green and relax. Right? Some people, or, or withdraw and eat some comfort food to try to relax, right? To get away from the drama, right? That's possible too. But some people will also be willing to keep the conversation going, but the terms need to change. 
can we slow this down a little bit? I'm with you. I'm not ending this convo, but can we do this in a more intentional way? That's also possible with this, especially because Vesta's on this uh, lunation. Okay, now all that said, uh, you can see in the subscription stuff, I go into depth. I like, really want you to understand the human experience and how to live more consciously with these energies. Okay, so this moon is also trying the Pluto and the Saturn. So, and then of course the sun is sextile the Pluto and the Saturn. So um, there's also an element in here of, if you're going to work through something, tools are available. If you're patient, if you're willing to approach intense things without judgment, healthy Saturn with Pluto, Pluto's intense things. If you're willing to be constructive and mature and own your part in different scenarios, you can make a ton of progress surrounding this full moon, whether or not you um, unplug from the situation or you try to change the rhythm and work through it. Those different ideas of the Taurus full moon. Okay, so there is the analysis here for this. Let's move on to um, the end of uh, oops, bu, 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 bu. the end of this. So the last thing to talk about is the sun uh, will quincunx, and this is a minor point, but I just want you to understand more about Eris. I like teaching about Eris. It's a dwarf planet that's out beyond Pluto. Its orbit is like a 558 years at this point. And it's only been in the astrology vocabulary. It was cited in 2003, officially given an alphanumeric designation in 2005, and then called Eris by the astronomers in 2006. So it's really only 13 years that we're working with this archetype in astrology. But the sun will quincunx Eris and Aries. Sun and Scorpio, quincunx Eris and Aries. Friday, November 15th at 23 Aries and half a degree. That's where Eris is. So I, not everyone is sensing Eris wavelengths, but I want to include this at the end of the video just in case you're open to considering it. Eris is where we push each other's buttons because we inadvertently reveal each other's vulnerabilities or insecurities is a good way to look at it. I like to think about Chiron is really into vulnerability and Eris has insecurities. One of the examples I use all the time is, let's say that you and I are friends and I'm coming to your house to pick you up and um, all I can, you know, all I can think about is how crappy I feel I lied to my best friend, I don't know, whatever. Um, and all I can think about on the way over is, wow, I really messed this up and I don't know how to fix it and he's really mad at me. Uh, and then I get to your house, you don't know this is happening or that I'm thinking about it or that it hurts. You get in the car, all you can talk about is how amazing your best friend is. Everything you say stings. I'm like, oh, oh, you know, you don't know this is a soft spot. You're unintentionally pushing my button. That's Eris, but also how I respond. What do I do in that moment? Do I make you wrong? Or do I accept that, yeah, I got to work on this and I'm vulnerable. I have this insecurity about it. I don't know how to fix it. And I may be embarrassed that I have this problem, whatever. So Sun and Scorpio, some true thing is being revealed, pressing on the wound of the button. This could be a comment somebody makes in passing or something someone says about you in front of several people. Could be something you realize about yourself or something you tell somebody else and you realize, oh my God, I totally just pushed that person's button. That person's starting to freak out and wants to blame me. What do I do? So the thing about Eris is that we need each other to grow we actually need each other to catalyze each other into growth. I essentially need you to inadvertently push my buttons. And you kind of need that too. It's not healthy to hide things or to have these things that we're not sure how to deal with. We need each other. So during this time, this whole thing about, you know, how much honesty, does honesty cost me too much or how honest can I be? There may be a moment a day before the 15th or on the 15th or the 16th of November where this comes up and somebody is suddenly frozen because a raw nerve is exposed. And what am I supposed to do? And again, we need each other to grow. So the more that we can not project and not blame others for what we're feeling and experiencing, it's really important. So that's the end of uh, this video. I encourage you to check out the subscription service. There are monthly and yearly options. And also I've recently introduced two levels. Level one has all the forecasting and the perks and everything. Uh, level two is all that stuff plus a monthly call where I'll do channeled guidance for you every month in a small group. 
and you can do this monthly or yearly. Just be aware that if you want to sign up for monthly recurring payments, I post those PayPal links from the 15th through the 18th every month. So I can consolidate new subscriptions to the middle of the month. And then when the sun hits a new sign, the 20th, 21st, 22nd, whatever, then the new materials are, revert, are, are released. So you're essentially you know, paying just before you get that month. So anyway, you can also try either level one or two out for a month or do a yearly subscription too. So see all that at tdjacobs.com. And uh, thanks for playing. Thanks for your time and energy. And I hope this uh, information is helpful. Take care of yourself.